determine the mass moment of inertia. And here I'm showing it in 3D, but it's really kind of overkill to show it in 3D. It's about this axis right here, so it only can rotate that way, right? Do you see how it can rotate? And so it's about the I sub Y axis. And where the origin is, that's really um, I sub G. It's right in the middle of that rod at, at the center of the mass. And it's a slender rod. And here's the answer. So I sub G is 1 12th M L squared. What exactly is M? the mass of the rod. It could have been a 5 kilogram, 3 kilogram, 20 kilogram rod. That's the total mass of the rod. What is L? Um, it looks like it's the total length of the rod and you're, you're interested in calculating I sub G. And the G is right in the middle, so it's L over 2 on both ends. Well, if you look at the rod, we need to talk about the mass and we're going to focus in on a little chunk and because this is the x-axis, we'll put it like this. This is a little dx thickness. And then it goes around like that. And so uh, this, we have to, it's, it helps us to introduce the area of the slender rod. It's just a little area. So if I do the product of a times dx, what does that give me? A little volume, doesn't it? It's a little disk volume. has area, cross-sectional area A, and thickness dx. If I multiply rho times dv, doesn't that give me my little chunk of mass at that location? Sure. That's what we're doing. So we need to calculate the integral of the distance from the center out to a, a chunk of mass, and we're going to sum up over all those chunks of mass. So that's really x squared. So this will be the I of uh, G is equal to the integral of X squared dm. Okay, we're going to integrate from negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. Okay, this dm, we just worked it out as rho A dx. Negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. A little, I, sh I jumped the gun a little bit on the limits here. It's really just summing over all the mass. Once I get the mass in terms of dx, then I put in my limits in terms of x. All right. So the row can come outside. The area can come outside. I have the integral of x squared dx. I think we can do that one. Row A, what is that integral? One third x cubed, evaluated, negative L over 2, positive L over 2. So you pick up, um, uh, let me just continue down here, row A, 1 third, L over 2 quantity cubed, minus a negative L over 2 quantity cubed. So we pick up the row a one-third, and then you have L cubed over 8 plus L cubed over 8. Did I do that okay? And in one-eighth plus one-eighth is two-eighths, or one-fourth L cubed. So we have one-third times one-fourth times L cubed. We have the row A. And so this is one-twelfth. Now you think about it. Row A L. Hey, we did that before. The total volume is rho A, well, the total volume is A times L. The total mass is rho volume or rho A L. So we, we have 1 12th, the mass L squared. One of those L's joins with this A and rho to make the mass. And there's our answer. 1 12th mass length squared. Does that look okay? Good. All right, so we know that about this point, G, we have I sub G is equal to 1 12th mass length of the rod squared. 
Uh, somebody says, no, 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 I want it about this point right here. What is I about this point O for the long slender rod? It's, it's not going to be 1 12th ml squared, is it? Let me pause and walk around and see you work it out. So let me pick it up here. What we're going to use is we're going to use a parallel axis theorem. What was a parallel axis theorem? Well, the mass moment of inertia about a different point off this time it's point O, that's very common, is equal to the mass moment of inertia about the center of the centroid or center of mass of that object. And sometimes we'll emphasize it with the bar on top without the subscript G. Sometimes it's the G subscript. And then what you have is you have the shift. This is the distance squared times the mass of that object. In this case, we're moving from G down to O. That's a distance of L over 2. So that's what the D is. And so we pick up uh, 1 third M L squared plus L over 2 squared times M. So all these terms have L squared M, and then we have the one third plus one fourth. We want to combine them. Maybe you multiply this by uh, four over four, multiply this by three over three. They're, they're, uh, did I do that right? Yeah, what am I doing? I got the wrong answer. That's one over 12. No wonder you're staring at me. One twelfth, yeah, that looked wrong for a minute. One twelfth plus one over four, which is three over three, so that's uh, four over twelve. Four over twelve is one third m l squared. There you go. One third m l squared. <clears throat>